Gene Deal, happy to have you back on the platform, my guy. Man, I'm happy to be here, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy to be able to be in a uh, platform like yours to give my opinion. You know, opinion is just like an asshole. Everybody got one. You know what I mean? You know, uh, I give my opinion. And it seems to make a lot of people upset. You know, but then a lot of people love my opinion. That's why you bring me on here. And and I really appreciate that, brother. Um, I just want to say this before we get started, Art, is that, you know, a lot of people think I came here to bring a black man down. And that's what I hear in the comments a whole lot. But it was nothing like that. You know, a black man didn't cuss a dead man's mother out. A black man didn't um, set his friends up and put them in a situation where they couldn't come home to their families no more. A black man didn't reach back and help the people that helped them make it up the ladder. It was Puffy. You know what I'm saying? I got tired of Puffy going on different platforms talking about how he loved the people that we was all with, how he loved the people that helped him when in fact, none of that stuff was true. So my whole thing about it is, man, I appreciate your platform for letting me, you know, voice my opinion. And like I said, opinions like an asshole. Some of these cats out here get paid for their asshole. I get paid to Give my opinion. Yeah, I feel you, man. I mean, yeah, you just on here giving your opinion, man. I mean, you was one of the people that was real close to the situation, so why not? Thank you. I appreciate that. So with that being said, right, the last interview me and you did was a day after the raid. And when you look at everything now, man, how you feel about everything? It's been like a week, you know, you knowing Diddy, you being around Diddy. Could you ever imagine that his houses would get raided for sex trafficking? Bro, you can't imagine no stuff like that. You understand? You can't think that because back then, he wasn't brother love. He was puffy. All the way up until he became Diddy. So his behavior over the years has changed. And the behavior that he shows now and that he has shown by being brother love I couldn't imagine that the police would be raiding him for sex trafficking. Nah, bro. I couldn't imagine that. You know what I'm saying? That, that wasn't him back then. He's a totally different person than he became. If you've seen him on other platforms, you know, telling, inviting men to party with him, inviting men to go shopping with him. You understand? That wasn't puffy. That wasn't Diddy. That was brother love and love. How you feel about all the people that's wondering, why haven't any of Diddy big name friends came out to defend him? Because either two things that I believe, either they know some of the stuff is true, either they took part in some of the, some of the stuff that happened, are they scared that it may make up, mess up their brand? See, nobody wants to be in contact with anybody that allegedly was sex trafficking. You see what the WWF did to Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon was one of those people that was called for sex trafficking. We don't hear a lot about it because... He gave up the company. He did what he was supposed to do, and he became ghost. But now, you see, they trying to do the same thing to Puffy. They trying to make him the or hip hop the face of sex trafficking, like they was going to do the WWF at one time, because that was a big story. So a lot of his people that know him, a lot of the people that been in those parties. And seems probably some unscrupulous sh that went down and was like, ooh, I was there. I hope they don't got me on tape. 
they feel in a certain way. So they're not going to speak on nothing until they've been approached with something. You got to realize when Homeland Security get their evidence together, they're going to send agents out. You understand? They might send an agent out to me. Yo, what do you know? What have you heard? What have you seen? What's been going on? You know what I'm saying? You know, did this happen when you was around him? Did this happen back in the day? That's what they're going to want to know. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to send investigators out. They're going to send people out for anybody that they can get some information from to help their case. So those celebrities ain't going to say nothing. You know, you got your man Stevie J speaking on it right now. He'll be one of the first dudes that they'll probably pull to the side and say, yo, well, you say that your man, I heard you on TMZ say that he never did this and he never did that. But um, ain't this you? If those pictures or those films or anything like that exists, you know what I'm saying? That's what they, they pay those agents to do. So, of course, I don't believe that none of the people who are his celebrity friends is going to speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing? I think that the celebrities that may be worried is because what Lil Rob said. Lil Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. Diddy had, yo, bro, can you imagine he had every room taped and bugged and they found little bugs and little tape recorders? I mean, little, little, little those micro... Um, projectors or whatever like that, or video cameras, they found them in the house, bro. So by them having those things in the house and people know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, woman on woman, man on man, all kind of crazy shit. Bruh. They just wondering who or when they're going to let this stuff be known. If it's on videotape. Yeah, man. I know they got to be shook, man, after finding out he was recording everything. But not only celebrities. Not only celebrities. I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's crazy. You personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted in his statement, are true, they got them. They got tapes of stuff. Yeah, we're going to see, man. We're going to see what they got. But speaking of the raid, right, did you see that viral video of Diddy? He was seen in Miami with Stevie J after the raid. You seen that video? Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. What you think about that? Well, I go way back when Stevie J first came to Bad Boy after they left Uptown Records and everything like that. And Stevie J and Puff fell out real bad over, you know, uh, it could have been producer credits and the whole nine yards. But Stevie J didn't F with him until Love and Hip Hop. When Stevie J went to Love and Hip Hop and he became famous from that, Puff called him over there and they had a meeting. And I guess they rekindled their friendship. Because... I used to bodyguard Stevie J and, you know, uh, go to different clubs. So, you know, I got pictures and everything. Stevie J didn't, uh, he didn't mess with Puff, you know, until after that love and hip hop thing went down. 
you know. So now they back cool. What got me about the stuff like that, that them being back cool, that Stevie J went on TMZ and was speaking up on behalf of Diddy. Now, if anybody I want speaking up behalf of me, or I had anybody speaking up on, on my behalf, it wouldn't be Stevie J. You understand? I don't think that uh, an individual of his caliber is capable or can be trusted in a way that I would like for him based on his actions on television and who he is as a person, what he has been shown as an individual is a type of individual that I would have speaking on my behalf. Come on, we know he's a drug abuser. We know that he's been seen putting his hands on women in the wrong way. And I don't know, this this that shit is crumbling, man. You know what I'm saying? But you 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 know you can always say this, man. And 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 the infamous words of one of the world's greatest comedians, Richard Pry, cocaine is a hell of a drug. Why you say that cocaine is a hell of a drug? Because LaRob said that they be doing the liquid cocaine in the, in the bottles, in the Ciroc bottles. We know Stevie J been in countless rehabs back and forth. We know we've heard of Puff being in rehabs, secretly going to rehabs too. So, my man, when you get on those type of psychotropical, uh, I think it's psychotropical drugs, man, and you start believing your own bullshit, and them two individuals together, man, man, you know, you know they got to be crazy. Some got to be wrong with. When when he stood up there, he said that he want to challenge fifty. He and, and, and I don't know much about that clout. Shit. Him challenging fifty to a fight, and we seen how fifty sit. We seen how Stevie J fight on Love and Hip Hop and all that other bullshit. Him Scrappy, him uh, this other cat. My man, there's no way. There's no way. He he. He don't want it with 50, bro. That, that's, if that ain't cocaine, the Pope ain't Catholic. So you feel like 50 Cent would give Stevie J that word? It wouldn't even be a job. 50 Cent would whoop, 50 Cent will whoop niggas like Stevie J on the way to a real fight. You seen 50 fight before? I ain't never seen 50 fight. I seen some tapes of him get down on that end, but I never seen him fight in person. But I know the demeanor of a man. I was with 50 Cent on a couple of occasions, and one occasion, it was just me and 50 and about probably six other dudes that didn't want to get out the car because he was ready to get down. And you could see it in him. You could see he got it in him like that. I'm looking at him. I wrote this shit about my, about this shit in my book. Fifty ain't back. He don't back down, bro. And you can see when when you know a dude is about it, about it, and got it in him. You can see it in his eyes. You can see it in the way he he, he carry himself. You see how he threw his own man in the bushes, Tony Ayo. They got tapes on Fifty getting down boxing. I've seen I've seen tapes on him. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen him in person, you know, as far as fighting. I've been with him in person, but he got it in him, bro. But yeah, yeah, that caught me by surprise because I always knew that Stevie J, he did production for Bad Boy, but I never knew him and D was that close until, you know, as of late, you know, since the raid. So. No, they was close. They, yo, bro, Stevie, Stevie J and Puff was like pots and pans back in the day. I don't know what happened between them, but something happened on the producing credit side that Stevie J stopped effing with him. 
And, st- you know, Stevie wasn't dealing with him at all. He was just doing more stuff for uh, for Jodeci than he was Bad Boy. So after him and Diddy fell out, he started working with Jodeci more. I see, I see. How you feel about the victim of the club shooting? I got to ask you about this, man. How you feel about her coming out now saying that, you know, Diddy, he shot her and not shine? How you feel about that? Well, the way I feel about that, the, the case is closed, bro. It can't be no double jeopardy. It can't be no retrial because they always, they already had a trial and a man was convicted for her injuries. A man already did time for her injuries. You understand? If they would have to go back and see that if there was ballistic tech, ballistic tests done on Jennifer Lopez, on Puffy, God bless the dead, on Wolf, did they do ballistic tests? And then see if they did ballistic tests and Puff had gunpowder on him, you know what I'm saying? Why didn't the police go through with charging him? Why didn't the police charge him? She could say that now, and she says she said that I don't take nothing from the victim. I don't take nothing from the victim. But her lawyer should have advocated. I know Puff and Shine them, they had the same charges. But like I said before, and like Shine said also, Shine said this also because it's true. Puff had witnesses that come in to testify against Shine and say they saw Shine do the shooting. So her making those statements now and, and, and the case is over with, it's been what? Well, how many years has it been? 15, 20 years? 15, 15, 17, 15. Shine went to jail for 10 years. It was in 99, right? So about 23 years, huh? About 20 some years. Ain't, ain't nothing they can do about that, bro. They can't reopen that shit and charge him. Yeah, I mean, she did say that she, you know, willing to lose her eye for authorities can, you know, remove the bullet fragment from her eye for they can use it as evidence against Diddy. So, I mean, she did say that. Bruh, I find that shit to be hilarious. How much money would you give for your eye? How much money would you give for your eye? They didn't even say Puff had a gun. They didn't even find, Sean got caught with a gun coming out the club. They didn't catch Puff with a gun on him. They caught a gun in the car. There were four people in that car. One person is dead. What do you think the lawyer's going to say? It was his. It was the bodyguard. It was the security. It wasn't Mr. Combs. You understand what I'm saying? So, she willing to lose her eye? And what is the fragment is come from Sean's bullet? Because what happened was, bro, they shot in the air and things ricocheted and hit. So they never said that Puff was caught or seen with a gun. Right, right. Hey, man, I mean, that's what she said, man. But I got to ask you about these new reports, right? How you feel about them saying that, you know, Jennifer Lopez, she was carrying the gun in her purse? My man, you can't make me believe that. I've been around Ms. Lopez plenty of times. And even though they say Jenny from the block, she didn't rock like that, bro. For real, for real. I've been around Miss Lopez a few times, more than a few times. You understand what I'm saying? She did not rock like that. She did. She don't get down like that, bro. Not at all. She wouldn't be carrying no gun for no puffy. Not at all. I know that. Yo, I would bet anything on that one, bro. That's right there. That's some internet bullshit.
So with that being said, right, how exactly did Diddy do shine wrong when it comes to the case? If you don't mind me asking, break that down. Well, I believe Diddy did shine wrong because he told security at the time and the head of security of his every, everyday operation was Paul Offer. If y'all know somebody who was there at the club that witnessed the shooter, go find them. People was found by security and the street team and brought in to Puff. When Puff liked their story, what they saw, he gave it to their lawyer. Their lawyer then sent them to the DA's office and those people testify against Sean. They had the same charges. So they separated lawyers. They had separate lawyers. And everything went on Sean. Because Diddy found the witness against Sean and brought him forward. So I guess, I, I guess that's how you do your man when you don't want to go to jail. That's what happened, bro. Sean said it in the whole interview. On that documentary that Sean did from jail, he spoke about that, but he, he forgave him. If that was you, would you forgive him? Man, I wouldn't, bro. I'm not into forgiving. That's for, they, that's, that's for Christ. That's what Jesus is for. Do you personally believe Diddy should have did some time? I think if Sean did time and they had the same case, if they had the same case and Diddy wouldn't have found those witnesses against Sean, they all would have went to jail. But because Diddy had, I think his name was Brack, Braxton, Braxton, or Braxton, Jewish lawyer, and Johnny Cochran, he was able to separate himself from the crime that was committed. So do I feel like he should have went to jail? I wasn't on the jury. But had he not found those witnesses to go against Sean, he would have been in somebody's jail. Yeah, I feel you. But I want to ask you, Ray, how you feel about some of these news outlets reporting that, you know, Jennifer Lopez, she was talking about Diddy when she said in her new documentary that she was in an abusive relationship? I personally don't believe it was Diddy. I personally, because I've never seen him in a situation other than pillow fighting or like that. And I know that he used to do that sometimes. To, to 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 mess with the, the younger girls and the girls he used to deal with, you know what I'm saying? But I never really seen him act that manner with Miss Lopez, with Jennifer, not at all. I've never seen him in a, a, a situation whereas that I, I could believe that Miss Lopez was hit by him or roughed up by him at all. So what was he doing in a relationship that you disagree with? It's, it's, there's no relationship I don't think is perfect, but I um I don't think that, you know, like when we, just for instance, we, we would come back to the studio and it'd be a bunch of girls in the studio. And he would try to convince her that because he's a superstar, he has to have a lot of girls around like that for his image. But Ms. Lopez has been around the block a few times. You know, she's been on, on major networks, you know, stars, dealt with individuals and shit like that. So, you know, what I didn't like is that they used to tag team her on, 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 on discussion about these girls and stuff that used to be around they used to be disrespectful. And they would try to be disrespectful to her. And I would be put in the middle of that bullshit sometimes. And then she'd be looking at me like, yo, Gene. When, in fact, I can't do anything because he's my principal. 
You understand what I'm saying? That was it. I've never seen uh, Puff rough her up or had a situation where she came out the room or she came out the room looking a certain way like she had been hit or, or, or she was upset in that manner. No. Nah. So tell me a situation where she was violated by a female. Well, we was in the studio and one of the young ladies was overheard saying that she ain't all that. So then Jennifer was about to go at her. So Puff told me to take her home. So I took her home on this particular night and she went, got the jeans on, put her hair back in a little ponytail, the little bun thing, you know, had the jean jacket on. She might have Vaseline on her ears or whatever like that, sneakers. And she came back to the studio and Puff had got them girls out of there. You understand? But she act like she was, she act like that she was ready to do something. So then Puff had gave her a song. So they worked on the song. Then we end up going to a club called Eugene's and met up with Destiny Child and Jay-Z and Dame Dash before we ended up at the cafeteria later on that night. But she was going to get that girl to business. From your point of view, right, did you see any signs that Diddy and J-Lo was going to break up? From your point of view, did you see the writing on the wall? Well, when, when I saw a lot of people, a lot of investigators following us, you know, I knew they were private eyes because I worked for a private eye company at that time also. That was a lead investigation on 29th Street between... Was that 10th, 10th and 11th Avenue? It was on 29th Street. Elite investigation. So you know a lot of the private eyes, different private eye companies. You work with them on different other with us, different other clients. One time we had Sharon Stone. So I knew a lot of the guys, and I saw a couple of guys who worked a couple of jobs with me before watching us. So I know a couple of guys that were watching us. So I was trying to tell Paul, yo, you know, we got PIs following us. You know what I'm saying? So it was only certain reasons if they was following us, if they was PIs, somebody was trying to find out something on us. And it usually be, they'll usually be following us, not when we're going to a big party and stuff like that. They'll just be following me and Puff, Puff on, our, on our days that we were out and about and we were going certain places. So Either somebody hired private eyes to follow us on behalf of Jennifer Lopez, or she did. But why do you think her and her team would do that? Somebody hired private eyes to follow us. It could have been her manager, Benny Medina. He didn't like Puff. You understand? So I I could tell when in the first meeting, when I was around him and Puff, when I was in the first meeting with around him and Puff, we was in this meeting. And I could tell how he was talking to Puff. You know what I'm saying? That he didn't so much care for Puff. So anything to get Jennifer away from him, I think he was capable and ready to do it. And you said J-Lo mom didn't like Puff either, right? She, his, his mom couldn't stand. His mom never took a present, a gift. If if, if, she, if if she needed air to breathe, she wouldn't take his last breath. Them having the feds follow him, man, as well, man. I know TMZ, they reporting that, you know, all the companies that Diddy was involved in got subpoenaed. What you think about that? Bro, that's going to be, the re you got to realize they going to go through everything. His finances. How did he make his, how did he file his taxes? What kind of money did he really make? You understand? They're going to go through, you got to realize they're going to have the IRS involved in that. They're going to see what what kind of money he was spending. They got to go through all that because they got to find something. Because whatever the situation is and they find something, you know what I'm saying? Even if they get him to plead guilty to a day in jail, <laughs> which is crazy. They just want a guilty plea. 
on something. Well, we didn't find him. We didn't find him sex trafficking, but he was filing his taxes and cheating on his taxes. They're going to, they do that to find something on him, bro. They, they, they probably pay, just say if they paid Diddy a hundred, a hundred million dollars. But Diddy lied and said that, uh, he only got $75 million and he only filed taxes on $60 million. You understand what I'm saying? From that particular company. That's fraud. So we want all your records on every dime that you gave him. We trying to find something on him. I don't think they, I don't think they were happy when Diddy spearheaded and helped Corey Jacobs get out of jail. It was a young lady who actually did all the work, but his influence with the Obamas and everything like that, got one of his best friends pardoned by Obama. Bruh, let me ask you something. If the federal government has a 99%, they have a 99% conviction rate. You think they can't find nothing in Diddy in his life? That may have been just a little wrong. They find shit on Donald Trump, and he was the president. You don't think they can find nothing that Diddy done wrong, based on what Lou Rob, Jonathan Odie, and Cassie said, bro? I'm not even gonna say that because somebody telling me they the first thing you know, they'll be saying that I was helping the. The uh uh the feds convict Diddy if I mention anything about Gina, who said he beat her so bad that it kicked the baby out of and kicked her baby out of. She was pregnant with his baby and she lost the baby. They'll say I'll be helping the authorities, but she got on national a a, a national uh show on YouTube. And said that whole story. Right, right. Facts. They could go back and she could press charges against him or bring up charges on her. Bring up charges on him on that. It's a lot of things that they can do, but they won't do. They want they want whatever they find in their investigation to bring those things up. They want to use the stuff they found on those raids. Yeah, it might be a wrap, man. 99% conviction rate. Yeah, it might be over for Diddy, man. That's all they need is one thing. That's all they need is one thing. They find something in his taxes wrong because they're going to have agents go through his taxes. So why do you think they want him so bad? Because I thought it was just, you know, sex trafficking. But it seems like now they're trying to get him on anything. Bruh, people do not listen. You understand? When I said he bit the hand that fed him, when he went after that, De- was it Delion, Diago, Delion, that liquor company, they got a lot of friends. And because they stopped the lawsuit, that don't mean that they friends and they people that he upset has forgave him. You ask me, will I forgive? They must then forgive him. Even though they stopped a lot of other stuff, lawsuits and things, they didn't forgive him for doing that and bringing that type of attention to their company. So he made some enemies now. Some of the people that was his friends are his enemies. And they always want to show us How dare you? I gave you millions of dollars. And you turn around and you bite the hand that feeds you. So now, by him doing that, by him putting himself in that situation, 
he can no longer be the face of any brand. He can no longer be the face of any brand for nobody. Unfortunate, man. You heard about these radio stations? They're not even playing Diddy music no more, y'all. Because you got to realize this, man. People, people that advertise, they don't want to be a part of something that may have been sex trafficking, paleophilia. They didn't say anything about paleophilia, thank God. But with this sex trafficking, this Me Too shit, the advertisers don't want their advertisement in those slots where his music play. Remember when they took all Bill Cosby, the Huxables off the air? Now all of a sudden it comes back on the air? It's the same thing. They don't want his music to play in the same time slot that they're doing advertising at. So what they do, they take it off the air. It's a damn shame that his name will go down as the laughing stock of hip hop. That's probably one of the worst. I, I can't say anybody who have fell from grace, even though if he don't lose all his money and everything like that, his fall from grace will be harder than anybody we would know in hip hop. Anybody we've known in hip hop, his fall for grace would be worse than anybody. Because he would be the laughing stock. And everybody would be doing comedy skits. And you gotta realize, even before all that shit started, Dave Chappelle was one of the best who did him. Yeah, unfortunate, man. Um, I just feel bad for all the artists that made timeless records over there, man. They got to, you know, get punished in a sense. He knew it was coming down the thing. That's why he gave them their publishing. <laughs> I, yo, my man, listen to me, bro. They have, what happens is, is this, bro. All these big companies, and this happened to athletes also, they have investigators. These investigators are paid to investigate you whether you're doing something or not. Do you understand that? The NBA have investigators on players. Whether they're doing something or not, and they report back to the commissioner. Hey, yo, what you call was seen at this club, and they were doing this and doing this and doing that. And you don't even know you're being investigated for nothing. But that's what they paid to do. These companies who give Diddy two, a hundred, three hundred million dollars a year to market they sh they have investigators. So he don't bring back no bad name on the company. They had investigated him and they told him he already knew a lot of this shit was coming down. That's why they pay these people, bro. They got in touch with his publicist and some stuff like that. Yo, your boy don't look good. If he don't straighten this out, you know, we might not have to pull back, call different people. Yo, uh, you notice that he started talking about Cassie way before she came out with the lawsuit. And hit him with the lawsuit. With two other women or whatever, like that, he would, I don't know if he was with Kim, but he was with Young Miami and stuff like that, and gave her a shout out at the Grammys. You think he didn't know that? You didn't think he didn't know what's coming with the lawsuit? What was going down? Three to six months before we even knew anything about shit. So let me go get the, let, let's, let me go get them their publishing back. It'll look like I'm doing something good, but I'm just, I'm giving it back because I know that shit ain't gonna be worth nothing, no way. <laughs> but say hello to the bad guy <laughs> I'm the bad guy in this yeah you might be right it does make sense he you know he probably knew what was coming man but you seen what Albie Short said him insinuating that Diddy had something to do with him getting in the coma man I don't 
you know, I don't know if Diddy capable of doing that. If he capable of blowing people cars up, if he capable of giving, uh, what's that guy named Machine Gun Kelly, drugs to have him butt naked in the window, dancing. That's his own artist said that. I ain't making this shit up, bro. You ain't hear his artist say that? Machine Gun Kelly said, yo, the nigga gave me something and I smoked it. It was called the Snoop Doggy Dog. They told me only take four hits. I took more than four hits. I was butt naked and dancing in front of his window. <laughs> I was like, is he capable of doing that? Yo, I, anything is possible, man. But I would wonder how did he get that close to Al to give him anything or who did he give something to to get an Al to make that happen to him? You know what I mean? Because, you know, him and Al never been the best of friends. He had motherfuckers think that he had adopted Quincy, and he never did. Al was never out of his son's life. I knew Al way back in Mount Vernon. He used to wear leather pants in a hundred degrees. <laughs> I knew it way back then, though, man. Al a good dude. A good dude. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So if Al got something to say about that's happening to him and Puff has something to do with, trust and believe. He gonna have evidence to substantiate that Puff did that shit. Either he gave him something or sent something his way. But what was the beef between Albert Shore and Diddy? Like, why wasn't they on good terms? The nigga was dating Kim. You understand? That's his kid's mother. And they was cool. They was friends. Misa and Kim was cool. They was all in that Uptown family, Uptown Records family. How you gonna date the mother of my, you my man, you cool, we all be around each other, and you dating the mother of my son. Alan never go try to date me, son. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, that ain't cool, man. But you can tell Albie Shore he don't like Diddy, man. You can tell he got a disdain for Diddy. No, he don't. He don't. Because Andre Harrell, Andre Harrell did some snake shit and nobody never know why that he was doing this. He was giving all the props to Diddy from Artists like Jodeci, Mary J. Blige. He was making like that he was the protege that brought them to the excellence that they were. The way they dressed, all that shit, that was Devante. Their music was Devante. But Diddy got all the credit for it. Why was Andre Harrell doing that? Yeah, that's terrible, man. But I want to ask you, because you got a lot of people that's wondering, Funsworth Bentley, why he ever came out in Diddy Defense? Why do you think that is? Well, I was there when Funsworth Bentley got his actual name. How they came up with the name and everything. We were sitting in front of the uh, apartment building on 74th and Park Avenue. It was me, him, Tony DeNaro. Puff was upstairs. They was trying to figure out, he had became Puff, one of Puff's personal assistants. You understand? To make sure all sh Puff shit is there when we get ready to go. Everything that was supposed to be in order. That was Farnsworth Bentley job. When Puff has to go to restaurants or place like that, you know, uh, he made sure everything was straight with that. You know what I'm saying? And he had another assistant too. Uh, but Farnsworth Bentley was his personal assistant. 
put out his clothes, told him what he should wear, all that, like a stylist and personal assistant all together, you know? So we was in front of the house, and um, this dude, Tony De Niro, he played guitar in that uh, Bad Boy for Life. The black dude, not the white guy, the black dude who played the guitar, that's Tony De Niro. I think he might be from California or something. So Tony De Niro was like, yo, we got to think of a name for you, man. And if you're going to be his personal assistant and um, slash butler slash umbrella carrier, whatever you're going to do, you understand? We got to think of a name for you. We, we're going to try to make you like Bentley or either uh, uh, Fonsworth or either Bentley. You got to be, you know, you got to have that kind of persona. You got to dress all the time, be neat and the whole nine yards. And then the dude, Derek, was playing with him like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know how to do that. I could be over the top. You know, he was acting like that. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the top. So he was saying that. And uh, the dude, Tony De Niro, said, we got to figure out a name for you, man. It's got to be on the level of, you know, those characters. He said, he's gotta, you got to be like Fonsworth. You got to be like Bentley. He said, fuck it. We're just going to call you Fonsworth Bentley. And he said, I like it. And they start calling him that. His name Fonsworth Bill. And I said, these motherfuckers corny. You <laughs> like I was, I was like, yo, believe this. But he was always right there, but not like at nighttime when we was at doing things, he was he wasn't he wasn't around, bro. He was only there when the cams was there and shit like that. You know, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much he was. He could do. I don't. I don't know if he would say anything because he probably signed the ND, a non-disclosure, and he don't want to say anything against Puff anyway because Puff got shit on him. And I ain't talk about no sexual shit, you, or none of that. Shit. The nigga was stealing, bro. <laughs> yo, bro. The nigga's a yo. He got. He, I don't want to put that on sticky fingers. That nigga. That nigga right there, bro, don't lay nothing down around him. You hear me? Don't lay nothing down around dude right there. Dog, Jennifer Lopez had these boots. They cost $5,000. I'm like, what kind of fucking boots cost $5,000? Now, you got to realize this is like in 2000, early 2000s. These boots cost $5,000. And because she was going to be out of out of the country or something like that, she didn't have them come to her house down in the village because she would have never got it because they'd be stealing her stuff down there at her apartment. So she had them come to Puff House. She wanted these boots so bad. She was mad. We, you know, they was they looked through everything trying to find Jennifer boots because Puff had like a, you know, Puff people used to just give them shit and send them shit from everywhere. So he had this room, this mail room in his house with numbers just that he never even opened. But I don't know how Fonsworth Bentley found that shit. But we went over there to his house and we found a lot of Jennifer shit and everybody else's shit that belonged to Puff. I guess, I guess Puff had too much stuff in the room and he was just keeping them for it. And hey, you seen this with your own eyes? That's crazy, man. My own eyes, bro. We went to his apartment. He don't even seem like that type of dude, yo, but damn. Security. Security also we went over there, man. They had to do shit, bro. And that's why Puff had stopped messing with him. And then he goes get a show. Puff ain't say nothing. He went and got a show of how to be a, teaching thugs how to be the gentleman. I hope the first thing he talked to him was that, don't steal! Yeah, that ain't cool if he was getting all the credit for their work. But I want to go back to this lawsuit, right? Do you think it's possible that young Miami, she might work with the feds to go against Diddy? My man, listen to me. Let me tell you something. 
They're going to bring all three of those women in. Yes, they're going to have an investigator talk to Young Miami, Cassie, and Gina. They all had a, a, a relationship with Puff at the same time. And maybe some other women, too, that we don't know about. But you got to realize they were talking at each other and going at each other back and forth, especially Gina and Young Miami. You understand? Young Miami said some things that is not sex trafficking, but it shows that Diddy had the power to make people do things they may not want to do. Because Young Miami told Gina, you know you're a carpet muncher, and if I tell Diddy to tell you to eat my box, you would. You would. Now, Young Miami's seen a lot of stuff, and she probably been in part of a lot of stuff because she said she liked to be peed on. She could have been playing. I don't know. I don't know. Don't really care. But those three women, they're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. And the investigators are going to ask them. Because they want to know. Because Lil Rod did say that she had taken part in young girls being there in a sexual act. So now, those three women, Cassie, Gina, and Young Miami, they might be the star witness. Whatever she tell those investigators, she better be willing to tell that to the courts. Because you'll be sitting up like Lil' Kim, you get five years in jail, you lie to a federal agent. How you feel about Diddy Shove? I think she got a lawsuit against him. Oh yeah, she. Had, I'm familiar with. I'm not familiar with the case, but I'm familiar with the story. That every time that uh, she, he would have his guests over, and she had to fix them food after they had uh, they sex appeared. That Sean would be Diddy would puff. Brother Love would be naked and she still would have to serve him and watch him. When she bring him his food, he would be naked and shit like that. And she thought that was very inappropriate. That was inappropriate. That was inappropriate. And she felt like she shouldn't have to work under those conditions. In the last interview we did, you said that Diddy, he was an informant and that went viral. And you know, we got a good reaction for that. But you had some people that you know, they was wondering, how do you know that Diddy was an informant? And they wanted you to go more into detail about it. Can you do that? Well, see, if I'm in the car with Kirk Burroughs and him and our driver, and we go down to 26 Federal Plaza, I know 26 Federal Plaza is the FBI office. All right? Now, what they went down there and what paperwork they took down there, I did not know until I found out later that he was working with an agent in D.C., but he was arrested by an agent in New York. But I can't go into it, and the reason I can't go into it is because another individual found out this information, and it's owed to him. But when Fox News and everybody say they can't find out who the agent is, that's bullshit. It's online. If you got certain systems that you could find out who the agent is, because we found out who the agent is. But it's not my story to tell. I would tell you that, brother, but it's not my story to tell. It belongs to somebody else, and they're going to see it come out. Puff was hit with a 40 rule because it's called a rule 40. 
because he didn't show up at the agent's office in D.C. The New York agent arrested him. He got uh, uh, um, adjudicated of all charges in January of 1999. Was it 99? I think it was 99 when he got 99 or 90. Was it 90? It was January of 90. It was either 96 or 99. I wish I could tell you more about it, stuff like that, but I don't have the paperwork in front of me. But when they tell you they can't find out the agent, he's 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 a director now here in New York. It's true. He was hit with a rule 40 for not showing up to the agent in DC and the agent in New York arrested him and charged him and they end up throwing it out and sealing the case. That's when, and that's how I figured that he was working with the FBI. And around this time when you found out that Diddy, he was an informant, you said that, you know, Diddy, he told the feds that Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, and Jay Prince was trying to make a company together? Well, what happened was is this, is that Suge Knight was trying to meet up with Dame Dash, Irv Gotti, Jay Prince, uh, Eric B. No. They was trying to get a distribution company. You know what I'm saying? Distribute, publish their own music. They, they was trying to bring their money together and do that. And what I know of is that and Jay-Z was a part of this because I, I heard Shook probably spoke on this too, that Jay-Z and Puff had had somebody write something up to say that they was trying to uh, monopolize, or they, they was a, get a monopoly on the industry and start their own dis distribution company. And they told the higher ups and they, that's when all those companies start going down, start coming up with federal charges and all kinds of, you know, things that's happened to them. You've seen it with Irv Gotti and them. You've seen it with uh, Rockefeller breaking up and all that shit like that. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, that's wild, man. So that's how the labels went down. Yeah, that's crazy, man. But before we end this interview, how do you feel about the people that's comparing Diddy to R. Kelly and Jeffrey Epstein. I don't I don't believe they have enough women that came forth that say that Puff has done the same shit R. Kelly and uh Jeffrey it was it Einstein? Epstein? Epstein. I don't think they have enough women that came forward that said that he has done the same thing they've done. I don't think that's a fair comparison. I think that they should get all the evidence. They should show the evidence. And show the evidence. And make me believe. And make me believe that um, Puff is the same as them. Well, what we got to understand is, is that, that was Puff a part of those logs that Jeffrey Epstein had? Did he visit the island? Because some people had told or said that Puff used to visit the island too or go on Jeff Stein Island. I don't know how true it is, but I do know that if he's in any of those logs, that's the only reason I can see that Homeland Security would have that knowledge and would be investigating him on that. 